we initially got the interview to do Free Guy, they wanted a vendor that knew how to use Unreal Engine because they were working on a video game project. So it just seemed to align really well. And we pulled together a bunch of our favorite um, snippets from different video games and stuff that we thought could be really helpful for the action sequence and for just inspiration along the way. And they really resonated with that. We were able to have a whole lot of fun just trying to get these great video game concepts into these sequences and collaborate with them in a way that where it would be funny um, and compelling and also just uh, brought back those those best moments from our, uh, you know, from our childhood and from the other games that we've been playing on the side. Using Unreal Engine, we were able to uh, set and dress environments in ways that ordinarily would have been very cumbersome because it's existing within a game environment. So we can move around and duplicate props um, and have that all happen in real time uh, with the camera angles in mind as we go. The big benefit to doing our set dressing in Unreal is that we were able to see the lighting and see some of the context while we're building out and arranging the sets. Um, and this was very helpful in particular for things like the location scouting that we did where we would build scans and use that to help track the sun, see how the light's gonna play on the day when they actually go to shoot in a more detailed way than you would just by using like a sun tracking app so that you know, oh, the sun's gonna be over here on June 3rd. We could actually pull up the light in the streets and say, hey, here's what it's gonna look like. Yeah, it was really cool to be able to um have that that light information as to how what the shadows would be cast based off of the buildings that are in the environment uh you know without actually having to go into the future and see where the sun would <laughs> would actually cast on the ground at that time of year and time of day and just like what get a sense for what buildings the sun's going to bounce off of so if, you know maybe an area isn't going to get direct sunlight but there's a big white building that's going to be hit by the sun yeah, so the DP was able to make those decisions way ahead of time so that they know if they have to push the shoot day or you know rearrange the calendar. We were able to help George, the DP, both location scout and figure out how to arrange outdoor sets in the way that would best uh, give him good light on the day that they were going to actually be filming. When we were doing post phase, uh, we were able to blend in takes that they had shot into the CG um, Unreal Engine rendered environment and then back into the live action footage in a way that felt pretty seamless. Whereas if we were to do that traditionally, um, you would really notice the jump in quality and the lighting quality, the textures, the shaders, everything worked to create a much more realistic um, end result uh, without without nearly as much effort. Yeah, especially in the, the opening one shot, the fact that we were doing that post is in Unreal blending I think it was seven or eight live action plates together, some green screens on one location. It even helped figure out parts of the shots where uh, they might need to replace a part of the car or a little piece of it. Instead of being gray shaded, kind of distracting Maya models that were blending in with these real plates of cars and stuff, it's a nice unreal render. I mean, some of the quick post fizz we did over about a week, I think you'd be hard pressed to point out exactly where CG parts of a car blend with the, the real car that was driving on the day. One of the big on-set components to Free Guy was the opening one -er shot um, that we kind of took from end to end, all the way from base concept phase all through to the shoot, and then post-viz before hand handing off to DD to final. It was a really technically oriented process once we kind of ironed out the shot itself. Starting in Maya and going to Unreal, we designed the whole shot, worked out creatively what it needed to be, and then on set, started breaking that out into its individual components of um, what did they need to shoot and where did they need to shoot it and what actors did they need to be there, what kind of gear did they need to shoot it, what could be on location, what has to be on green screen. We were pretty integral in helping figure that out as well as you know how these pieces will actually come together. The, the big bit part of focus out on location was really ironing out the stitch points, figuring out how we're gonna transition from Channing Tatum sitting in a sta stationary car on a green screen, that same car with a stunt driver in it, hauling ass through downtown Boston, 
and doing that without old-fashioned methods that you would use to stitch shots like just something big you know coming in front of camera or coming at camera and instead doing it very seamlessly through careful choices of how the plates would stitch and then once they filmed that pulling all of the new information that we got from the filmed plates as well as our CG and real backgrounds doing quick comps for post viz to make sure that yeah okay what we what we shot today is actually going to work this is going to stitch together fine kind of like verification process almost on the day on the fly So we started adopting Unreal Engine as a studio in about 2016 uh, on uh, War of the Planet of the Apes. And at the time, it was very new to try to create a pipeline between Maya and, um, and Unreal. And the, we set, you know, we created some tools. And since then, we've continued to up them and uh, get the familiarity between artists and supervisors and the rest of our crew. At this point, Unreal is our default interactive rendering software. We're really looking forward to what's going to happen in the future and, and how we can embrace Unreal Engine more and more with the natural features that they've been including. Like every month, it seems like there's some cool new thing that we get to incorporate into our workflow. So since, since Free Guy, we've, we've been rapidly adopting all the tools that Epic rolls out into Unreal and have started uh, in the last year and a half or so doing more and more of, of our layout and that kind of process within engine, some simple animation in engine. And as they uh, improve the animation tools, what we'd love to do is start doing all of our animation there. We're eager to keep developing these tools and processes uh, as we move forward with Epic and uh, the new changes that are coming our way. Thanks for checking this out. We can't wait to tell you more about all the work we're doing currently and in the future with Epic uh, as we make the jump into Unreal 5.